All right, now we're going to answer a question here. Um, is the Antichrist a man or a system? Now, there was a whole thing there, Reformed theology. A lot of the Reformers came out, and they were very big on calling the Pope the Antichrist. It's interesting, the Waldensians called the Pope the Antichrist, too. And the Pope is an Antichrist. I do believe that. I will agree with that. But is he the Antichrist? No, I don't believe that. But one of the one of the doctrines, I can't say that they all believed it, but one of the doctrines which came out of the Reformation is that it's the papal system that's the Antichrist. And a lot of those guys turned out to be amillennial. Okay, the Protestant reformers were mostly Catholic priests that were coming out protesting the abuses of Rome and seeking to reform the things. They weren't trying necessarily at first they weren't trying to start a new church. They were saying, let's reform the problems with the Catholic Church. I'm going to read a quote about that in just a minute. But um, I have here a quote from Martin Luther. I uh, just want to read this quick here. It says, A treatise of Martin Luther written shortly before his death in 1546 was entitled Against the Roman Papacy, a Institution of the Devil. Amen. Luther began the holy tirade thus, Quote, the most hellish father, St. Paul III, in his supposed capacity as the bishop of the, Romish, or the Roman Church, the head of the accursed church of all the worst scoundrels on earth, a vicar of the devil, an enemy of God, an adversary of Christ, a destroyer of Christ's churches, a teacher of lies, a brothel keeper over, over all brothel keepers, and all vermin, even that which can be named an antichrist. I wish he would speak his mind. <laughs> I mean, just tell us what you really think. Uh, so, you know, Martin Luther, that's one of the reasons, that, you know, again, you want to make a Catholic mad, just say the words Martin Luther. <laughs> They'll go into a fit of rage, most of them. Um, but the fact is, a lot of these reformers did believe that the Pope, the papal system, was the Antichrist. But they called the Pope himself the Antichrist. And, you know, if you study the Bible that the, the Antichrist sits in the temple of God and claims to be God, basically. Does the Pope do that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is the Pope an Antichrist? That means two different things, by the way. It means against Christ, the Pope is, and it also means replacement for Christ. And the Pope does that, too. So the Pope does qualify in some ways, but I'm going to show you here in this study that he is not the antichrist which is going to come and it's not the catholic system either um but as i said earlier the the a lot of the protestant reformers uh wanted to fix the roman catholic church they wanted to reform it they were protesting against injustices desiring to reform it and some of these guys back then really had some good insight and uh here's a one of my favorite books uh, the Greatness of Oliver Cromwell, and this is a quote from Cromwell. He says, quote, Whosoever would have gone about to heal Babylon when God was determined to destroy her, he does fight against God because God will not have her healed. And of course, when he says Babylon, he means the Catholic Church. Okay, and that's a good quote. You read the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and 18, and there you see the destruction of Mystery Babylon. And there's a lot of, you know, oh, well, I think it's America. It's not America. It's the Catholic Church. That We have a whole sub or a whole sermon on that. So, but let's look at this thing of, you know, some of the verses that these people will use to try and prove that the, the Antichrist is a system and not a man. We're going to go to, first to 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to look at the first uh, passage that they'll turn to. And I've I've run into this now a couple times. I've had people, you know, write, oh, you know, I'm thankful for your videos, but you're wrong. The Antichrist is not a man, it's a system. And I say, what's your proof? And this is where they go. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. It says here, Little children, it is the last time... And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us, 
For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And they say, see, there are many Antichrists. So it has to be a system. It cannot be a man. And it's like, well, yeah, but back up. Okay, verse 18. As ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. It's a singular reference before the plural Antichrist show up. Okay, it's right there. It's not a system, it's a man. Antichrist is a singular reference. And uh, you say, well then, how can there be many Antichrists? Well, the Antichrist's plural is a spirit. It's talking about a spirit of Antichrist. And there are three tests for the spirit of Antichrist. If you want to know somebody that is Antichrist, it's not some dope-headed, fornicating Satanist in California or something. That's not a true spirit of Antichrist. They are against Christ, yes, but a true uh, manifestation of a Satanic person that's against Jesus Christ, they will be religious. Okay? That's the way it is. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. We're going to see the first test for Antichrist here. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Okay? So you see the very first one there. Jesus is the Christ. Okay? And also he denieth the Father and the Son there too. But it's interesting because the NIV takes the name Christ out 52 times. I've proved it. I have all the scripture references. You can go to kingjamesvideoministries.com and look it up. Okay, I did the collation. It's not a theory, it's a fact. So, the NIV fails the first test. Look at the second test, verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Okay, denying the Son. The Son. Okay, that's so important right there. It's not a Son, it's the Son. The term the in front of a singular word, it's defining right there. Capital S. And yeah, it's a capital S. It's not a lowercase s. Again, the NIV says a son of the gods in Daniel 3.25, whereas the King James Bible says the son of God in that passage. So again, the NIV fails the second test for Antichrist. And there are a lot of people that believe in Jesus, but they don't believe that he's the son of God. Okay? He was a prophet, you know like the stupid uh, Muslims believe. All right, he was just a prophet, like Muhammad. You know, he wasn't even the greatest prophet. He Muhammad was the greatest prophet. You know, just nonsense. So, you know, Muslims, it's not, oh, we should be respectful. No, they have the spirit of Antichrist, and they need to be rebuked. Now turn over to 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 through 3, and we're going to see the third test for Antichrist. It says here, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, um, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Now, it's not the Antichrist that's already in the world. It's the spirit of Antichrist. And notice it says, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You see, you say that he is come in the flesh about somebody who's still living. Guess what the NIV says in that passage? <clears throat> has come in the flesh. They make it past tense. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. So right there. And there are so many other things that you could use to prove the spirit of Antichrist, but I'm just picking on the NIV because it's worthy of it. They fail all three tests for the spirit of Antichrist. And I firmly believe that when you have these preachers standing up in the pulpit, reading out of the pages of their NIVs, the spirit of Antichrist is flowing right out of the pages through them and out into the congregation. And that's why these NIV churches are falling apart. That's why there's all sorts of problems out there because the spirit of Antichrist is filling those churches. You know? Oh, well, I don't think it's a big deal to change, you know, is to has. Well, you don't know the Lord very well. Okay? It is a big deal. You're not to change any of the Word of God. 
And the NIV, they just came out with a brand new one, 2011, just March, they came out with it. And all these verses where they've been proven wrong time and time and time again, they're still in there. They won't fix them. Why? Because it's an Antichrist Bible. Just as simple as that. Now turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to see another one. I actually had a guy recently quote this to me to prove that, you know, the Antichrist is a system and not a man. And again, it doesn't work. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. I want to do an expository study here at some point in the future on these three chapters because it really attacks those who believe in a post-tribulation rapture. But look at verse 7 here, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And they say, well, see, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So the mystery of iniquity is the Antichrist, so it's already working, so it's a system. No, it doesn't work. You've got to read the whole context there. Look at verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, these people are being troubled because there are false prophets saying that you missed the rapture and that we're heading for the day of Christ. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Man of sin. Son of perdition. That's not a system. That's a man. One man. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Is that a system? Is it a religious system that's going to sit in the temple? doesn't make any sense. That doesn't work. The Antichrist that's coming, Antichrist shall come. That man right there, it's a he's a man. Okay? Uh, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What's that? The spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is here. There are many Antichrists, which any Catholic Pope that's ever lived is a Antichrist. Okay, why? Because they have the Antichrist spirit. So there are many Antichrists, but the Antichrist hasn't showed up yet. What's going to hold, what's keeping the Antichrist from showing up? Look at the rest of verse 7. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The term let there means to hinder, to stop. Now, who is that? What's stopping the Antichrist from showing up? The body of Christ. Okay? It's right there. And the Holy Ghost within the body of Christ. And I'm going to get into this in a little bit, but there's this thing right now. There's coming an economic collapse, and there's going to be chaos, and there's going to be without rule of law, and there's going to be all this bad stuff. And it's been predicted now for a long time, and a lot of people are saying, it's going to come, it's going to happen. But it's not happening. Why? Honestly, more and more, I'm starting to believe that it's because of the body of Christ being here. I think that's what it is. And when we leave, it's just going to be like an explosion going off. I mean, literally. You know, I think that there's going to be the thunder of God's voice speaking, but it's just going to be like, spiritually, this world's just going to... just It's going to be bad. Let's continue here. Verse 8. Rapture happens in verse 7, verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now we're going to go back to Revelation chapter 12, and we're going to see about this thing. So you see... There's a popular thing it's said, and I used to say it myself, that there are no signs which predate the rapture. Well, I don't totally agree with that because there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 it says there would come a falling away first. Okay? That's an apostasy among the body of Christ. And we are right in that thing right now. 
the stuff that's going on right now, Sunday morning, and being called church, is just unconscionable. I mean, who would have ever thought that this stuff would have happened? Even back when I was a kid, you could have gone to almost any church out there, and it would have been people dressing, you know, respectfully, modestly, you know, and it would have been singing the old hymns, preaching out of the Bible. Almost all the churches were the same back when I was little, back in the 1980s. Now, it's ridiculous. If you can find a church that's that way, it's rare. Most of the churches, I mean, I, I heard uh, there was a guy I, I know of that has a friend who's a Lutheran, and he said, he said I can't find a Lutheran church that's, that's still the old style Lutheran anymore. It's all rock and roll. And this guy, he's, you know, I don't even know if the guy's saved. But the point is, he's disturbed by the rock and roll coming into the churches. You know? Yes, there is a falling away right now. It's bad. But let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 12. We're going to see some events here uh, as we continue. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, if you're a Catholic, you'll say, well, this is the queen of heaven. This is Mary. It's not Mary. Okay, it's a symbolic picture of Israel. The 12 stars are the 12 tribes. This is not Mary. Okay, it's Israel. Verse 2, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We're going to see about who this red dragon is here in just a little bit. But I'll give you a hint. It's Satan. <laughs> uh, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who's the man-child? Yeah, Jesus Christ. There can be no doubt of that. Okay. That's who it is. And look at this. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, when did that happen? Ascension. Well, basically, it happened there in Acts chapter 1. Okay? But, I want you to think about something. When Paul was persecuting Christians, well, Saul at first, and Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, what did he say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me. So, Jesus Christ himself went up to heaven in Acts chapter 1, but the body of Christ is still here. And the body of Christ is going to be called up. And guess what? The dragon has been seeking to devour the body of Christ since the very beginning. And you know, there's a statement which has been made many, many times, and that's the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Every time Satan really attacks the body of Christ, it grows <laughs> and gets more and more and more converts. I mean, it must be a real frustrating thing for the devil to realize no matter how much I kill these people, no matter how much I persecute them, I can't devour them. And right now, I think more than ever before, I think Satan is looking at the churches here in America, the, the real strong Bible-believing churches, and he's just going, man, I just want to devour them. I wish I could bring in another Dark Ages. I just, oh, I want to get them. And I don't know. I'm praying, I'm hoping that maybe the Lord will have mercy on the Bible believers here in America and he'll catch us up before the devil comes in to devour us. That should be a prayer for all of us. We shouldn't say, I want to be martyred. I want to know what it's like to live in rough times. We shouldn't want to do that. We should want to go to be with Jesus Christ. I've gotten away from it, but for a while there, I was praying for the rapture every single day. You know, I want to go to see Jesus. That should be each one of our heart's desires. You know, it can be it can be fun down here on the earth, and there's things that you can like and whatever, but really we should want to go to be with Jesus. So, continuing on here. Uh, don't have much more to go here. Um... Now, and, and by the way, I'll say this too. The woman, which is Israel, she did give birth to Jesus Christ and also to salvation for us. Jesus said in John 4.22, um, 
ye know, or ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. It always cracks me up how these people who profess to be Christians can attack the Jews so viciously. You wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for the Jewish race. Amen. Sorry. Your whole Bible is written by Jews. It's a Jewish book. It's the way it is. Salvation is of the Jews. Now look at verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay, now I believe that's about halfway through the tribulation time period. It doesn't mean that the events of Revelation 12.5 happen and immediately after it, verse 6 happens. Okay, there's, I think it's some time there in between that. Uh, let's look at verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan... Or you have the identity of the dragon, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice, a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, I really would love to get into all this stuff in great detail, but for sake of time, I can't. But it's kind of interesting because from this passage, I believe that when we get up there, Satan's actually going to be in heaven for a little while. And eventually, he's going to get kicked out about again about halfway through this thing, which is going to be kind of interesting. It's going to be very interesting, you know, and that, that'd be the good way to do it, you know take the body of Christ up and there's there's the devil and you know he has to see you know the bride of Christ there and now he can't do anything at all you know to the bride of Christ and then he you know before the marriage supper he gets kicked out you know get out of here <laughs> gets kicked out what were you going to say um that passage down here um with it says um verse 10 of revelation 12 it says, And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. I just wanted to bring out the thing that Ruckman said in one of his videos talking about this. He said that's his Christ. That's I think he said the King James Bible is the only one that says that. Mm -hmm. The other translations all say something different. A Christ or... Some yeah. such thing, but his Christ. So I just thought it'd be good to get that. Yeah, on that's the that is a good point, Derek. Um, you know, the fact that God has his Christ. Satan has his Christ too. We're gonna see that in just as we continue here. Um verse twelve. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. You know, who's that? Well it's the Christians that are up there. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. He goes after the Jews. He goes after the nation of Israel. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the servant. Three and a half years, basically. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Tribulation Jews. Orthodox Jews, basically, there. Okay, now... Let's continue on here. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Again, we have a man here, likened to a beast. And 
I feel kind of bad here because I can't really get into all the de fine details of this, but you compare this stuff back to the book of, of uh, Daniel, and you'll see the tie-ins there. All right, it's a man, the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. You can read about that in Matthew 24. That's who we're talking about here. But he's not the only one. Look at uh, Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That's kind of interesting. If you ever see the, the hat that the Pope wears, that fish-looking thing, he turns to the side, and it's like two horns. Kind of interesting. I'm sure there's no tie-in or anything there. Uh, verse 12, And he exerciseth, all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The second beast here, the false prophet, it's not that he replaces the first beast. He comes and he's ruling with the first beast and he's causing people to worship him. Now, I believe that that false prophet is going to be a future pope. I don't know, maybe it'll be Ratzinger, you know, he might, you know, be there or something, but, or he's, you know, he's kind of older, he might die, uh, but the fact is, you know, which, you know, whatever, but um, the fact is, I think it's going to be a future pope, because he would be the perfect one, you have this Antichrist guy showing up, which, honestly, I believe, looking at the thing through, down through different years, I think he's going to be... Basically, when he shows up, when the Antichrist shows up, I think he's going to look like most people perceive Jesus Christ looked like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think of the impact that that would have if you had this Christ guy show up that looked like Jesus Christ. And then you have the Pope saying, Christ has come back to usher in his kingdom. Let all worship him. I mean, think of the fanatics that people would become. You know, the militant Bible-believing Baptists, the IFB cults, you know, they've left. Something happened. There was an explosion, and they're all gone. And in the chaos, you know, this Christ comes back, and the Pope says, here he is. He's back. People would forget about the rapture very quickly, and they would, they'd be falling down, foaming at the mouth, worshiping the Antichrist. And if the Antichrist would say, go out and kill those Jews... They'd be lined up wanting to do it. But let's go. We're going to look at two more places and then we're done. Revelation chapter 19. I always like getting to hear. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. You know, I get so sick and tired of seeing people getting away with crimes. I get so sick and tired of, of all the corruption and there's no judgment and there's no justice right now. Uh, there's a guy right now, I'll just say this kind of as an unrelated thing, but I wish this could be true. Uh, there's a constitutional law scholar, Bruce Fine. He was actually in the Reagan administration, and he's actually drawn up articles of impeachment for Obama. And, there, and seriously, I mean, this, this isn't some little small-town hick lawyer that wants to go after Obama. I mean, this is a big-shot lawyer, you know. I'm actually going to pray for the guy. <laughs> I listened to an interview. He's he's solid as far as standing up for this country. I would love to see Obama impeached. I really would. I don't want to see him voted out. I want to see him impeached. You know, is it going to happen? Well, probably not. But I wish it would. Just as kind of a final, you know, <laughs> that'd be great. But let's look here. Revelation chapter nineteen, verse eleven. This is justice that's going to come in, and nobody can stop it. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called The Word of God, capital W there, the manifest word. Uh, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's you if you're saved. Uh, if you're pacifist, you better get ready because you're going to be in the army. Uh, verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Remember the man-child in Revelation 12? Here he's identified. 
and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. In other words, these turkey vultures and buzzards and eagles and whatever else, you know, it's not going to be roadkill that they're going to get to eat. It's going to be kings. <laughs> you know, it's delicacy. <laughs> Uh, let's continue here. Verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. Oh, wait a second. The beast? Well, this is a religious system. You kidding me? It's a man. The beast is a man. And, uh, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both, it's a reference to two, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. How can you make that into a religious system? It's not. The Antichrist is a man. The false prophet is a man. And they will be cast into the lake of fire right in front of their army. No, let's judge. Let's see if there's, you know, the book of life open and see if it. Nope. You, you, in you go. And then look what happens. Verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Now you go down through Revelation 20 there. We won't forsake a time. But look at verse 10 in Revelation 20. This is a great one to use on Jehovah's Witnesses that believe in annihilation. You go to hell, you burn up, and you're gone. It says here, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. It doesn't say were, it says are. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan, the great red dragon, is getting away with things right now, and the worst time period yet to come is in the future. But there's his end. Justice will be done. And, you know, from this study, I hope that you've seen that it's very clearly, yes, the spirit of Antichrist is here. Yes, there are many Antichrists that have that spirit of Antichrist. But to say that the Antichrist is a system that's already here and we're not really going to have the tribulation and we, you know, that happened in the first century and, you know, and we're in the millennial kingdom right now or something, a bunch of nonsense. That's ridiculous. Don't fall for those lies. The Antichrist is a man. The Antichrist is not a religious system. And yes, the Pope is an Antichrist, but he is not the Antichrist. And a lot of these false prophets that are out there that are denying Jesus Christ, denying his deity, they also are antichrists. But they are not the antichrist. And, you know, another thing too, the antichrist, when he shows up, the whole world's going to worship him. And the dragon is going to give him his seat and his authority and power. That hasn't happened yet. The whole world is not going to worship uh, Pope Benedict XVI, Joseph Ratzinger. There are a lot of people that make fun of him. They're going to worship him. Okay, the whole world isn't going to uh, worship the... I just found out that the uh, head of the Greek Orthodox Church died, and now there's a new one, the uh, Father Bartholomew, or so, I don't know. They're not going to worship him. They're not going to worship the head of the Islamic cult. I don't even know who you know that would be. The people aren't going to worship guys like that. But if a man shows up that looks just like Jesus Christ, the whole world's going to worship him. Just like the Bible says. It's coming. So don't fall for the thing that the Antichrist is a system and that we're in the tribulation or in the millennial kingdom. Don't fall for that stuff. So that's it for this morning. Again, thank you for listening. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. 
If these sermons or videos have been a blessing to you, please help us to continue this work by supporting this ministry. You can send a check payable to Brian Denlinger to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 300, Bradford, PA, 16701. Or you can donate online through PayPal at our website, www.kingjamesvideoministries.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you.